Welcome back to another edition of Plane Talk. Walter here. So, following up on the question and answer session, there's still probably another dozen or two dozen questions that need to be answered. But one of which came up had to do with blade camber. Now, for those of you who don't know what blade camber is, see how that's getting a shaving out of the middle? That's because the blade has a convex shape to it. Okay? Much like a scrub plane. Scrub plane is the epitome of camber. It's got the largest camber of any plane, other than, of course, a molding plane. And what the scrub plane will do is actually create almost a groove, okay? But it's feathering out to each side. Well, you take that same concept and apply it to jack planes, four planes, tri planes. And what you do is you're putting a slight camber on the iron or the blade, as, you call, as it's called, so that you're taking wood off mainly in the middle of the blade which allows it to feather up to left and right and eliminates plane tracks. So if you could look at this against the light, there's no lines, there's no tracks. The more camber, then the rougher the work you can do and still have that feathering See what I mean? This is not taking full width shavings. But what it is doing, it's leaving a slightly scalloped surface. Okay? You can, it's hardly noticeable, but it is there. So how do you create that? Well, I'll just bring out this blade here. It's a spare blade. This one happens to be a uh, Ward's Master. How you create it freehand would be to come to your stone, find your bevel, come up. Now you're on your edge. Come up just a little bit more and now you sharpen that edge as if it was going to be perfectly straight across. Okay? Take the burr off on the back, proceed just as normal sharpening. However, if you want to camber it, you're going to have to lift to one corner and lift to the other. Now, I'm not talking about rounding that corner. I've seen plane irons with that. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. What I'm talking about is lifting up, once you have it sharpened straight across, okay, you've got that sharpen straight across and now you apply more pressure to one side and you, you, you're not touching this side, you're just touching this side you apply a little more pressure to that side, you're still you're still mostly flat but you'll feel the burr forming on this side but not this side then you reverse that you come back to this side and there's a lot of videos on this out there. There's a lot of great technique. But that's basically it. Now another way you can do it, and I've seen a lot of old timers do it this way on oil stones. And a lot of the oil stones were not flat. So they would come, they'd find their bevel, come up, and then they'd start, start sharpening. Figure of eight, okay? Or they'd do circles but then they'd start lifting it 
this way. All right, see that? They start doing that. I've seen that a lot with the old timers because they were dealing with stones that were less than flat and they had to work with what they had. And even when I apprenticed, the importance of a flat stone was not discussed. It was always find the back of the bevel, come up until it's done, start circular or figure eight. And then lift, 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 lift. And that key starts taking off more on each of the corners but less in the middle. You can make as much or as little camber on an iron as you would like. I will say this much. Put more camber on your jack plane if you're using it for rough dressing a board. Put more camber on your number six, number seven, but put zero camber on your eight if all you're going to use the eight for is chewing up and jointing, okay? Whatever plane you use for jointing, put very little camber on it. If you need to, get yourself another set of uh, plain iron and cap, chip breaker. This is, a, this is a cheap generic set. I have no idea who made it. It hones up well, it sharpens well, I keep it as a spare. If I need something with a special angle, I'll do it to something like this and keep it on the side. So spare irons and caps are a good thing. Once you're done with your rough work, then you come in with your smoother, which has a little less camber. Okay? And that way you can actually smooth it, flatten that top, and polish the surface. I hope that helps a little bit in, in regards to camber. The wood of the day, the wood we're planing here is mahogany. And no, it's not some mahogany look-alike. This is true mahogany. I'm not going to make a lot of shavings with it because it's a precious wood to me. I don't find much of this. It works beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. You get a nice smooth polished surface. It is an open, open poured wood like walnut so you if you want to get a very high gloss finish, you have to fill the grain. This piece is from a different board. It's a little darker in color. The other thing this one has going for it is the uh, road wood. The grain's a little different there, there, here. You see this in a lot of the tropical woods. But we do get it here in oak and cherry. It's when every so many years the wood reverses grain direction. See, it's so like over here, I'm planing out this way. Over here, I'm planing back this way. So it can drive you nuts. But a good sharp blade, finely set, with a nice chip breaker, and you'll get through that work beautifully. Mahogany. I don't know which is the proper Latin word, but I believe it's something like Suetina or something like that. Wikipedia. Google it. Once again, camber is the arch of the blade. Create as much or as little as you like. We're going to talk about it a little bit more when I get into bevel up planes. 
because bevel up planes, they behave a little different. You have to give them a little more camber. See, like right here? See, look at that. She's tearing out right in here. Tearing out. But over here it's smooth, and over here it's smooth. That's the row. ROE. And there's a couple ways to, to fight that and, and, and win. The number one way is a very sharp, smoother, finely set, and take a very fine, take a very fine cut and work through that. That's one way to, to fight it. Another is to Approach it at an angle, like this. It's getting better. So you come in at an angle. Another way to uh, combat tear out in road wood is to have a blade with a back bevel or a blade that has a higher pitch. A York pitch, 60 degrees, 55 degrees. Some people will combat this with a scraper. There we go, almost gone. The one thing different about hand planing and using a scraper is the scraper, in my opinion, no matter how finely set, it just doesn't polish the surface. But there you go, it's gone now. Tear out's gone. I don't know if you can see that, but tear out's gone. So, there are ways to deal with tear out. Don't get too frustrated. But there's a typical example where from here over to there it was planing fine, and from here to there was planing fine, and this middle section was reverse grain. But that's real woodworking. That's learning what your wood will do for you and what it won't. Paduke will do this. Some of the rosewoods you'll find, but Paduke you see it a lot. You'll see it in some of the other exotic woods, which I don't use. I don't use exotic woods. Mahogany is the most exotic I get, other than maybe olive wood. Only because I just... I live in North America and we got lots of great wood. That's basically what it comes down to. It's not a political statement or anything like that. But there you go. Camber and mahogany. Keep the questions coming. We're going to do another question and answer because I have a lot left over from last time. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate it if you did. And I really appreciate you taking the time to come and visit with me. So that's all for tonight. Walter out.